US spokesperson has given an effective green light to Turkey's ongoing military incursion in Iraqi Kurdistan. A Turkish footballer has been handed a two-game ban for making an ultra-nationalist gesture as his president, Erdogan, announces a surprise visit to the tournament. The UK has voted in a new Labour government in an election marked by a major swing towards the far-right protest party, Reform. And Iran has gone to the polls in its second round of presidential elections in a campaign marked by boycott, low turnout and last-ditch appeals to Kurdish voters. Learn more with Media News. The Turkish military presence in the Duhok governorate of Iraqi Kurdistan has ramped up in recent days, with dozens of armoured vehicles entering the area under supervision of the Kurdistan Democratic Party. Reports on the 4th of July indicate that Turkish forces, including armoured vehicles and tanks, entered Ahmedi around 2am local time. Since the 22nd of June, hundreds of Turkish armoured vehicles, tanks and troops have been deployed, setting up checkpoints and attempting to evacuate villages in the area. Asked about the incursion, US spokesperson Vedant Patel dodged the question, giving an effective green light to the ongoing military incursion. Uh, Look, in any, in, in any region of the world, when we see um, civilians placed uh, in, uh, in, in risk, it is, of course, uh, something of concern to us. That's why we're uh, in making sure to engage closely with our partners uh, in Turkey to make clear that uh, when such kind of uh, strikes are being undertaken, that they need to be coordinated with authorities in the Kurdistan region as well as uh, Iraq. Uh, however, there are, as I said, legitimate concerns from the PKK, uh, and we understand those. But uh, we continue to call for greater coordination to ensure that civilians are protected from harm. A diplomatic row has erupted after Turkish footballer Meri Demiral made a salute associated with the ultra-nationalist Grey Wolves organisation at a match in Germany. The display of the wolf salute at the Euros Cup has prompted renewed calls to ban the Grey Wolves movement in Germany. Amid mounting diplomatic tensions, Turkish President Erdogan announced that he will attend the match between Turkey and the Netherlands in the German capital Berlin. The visit is seen as clear support for the Turkish footballer who displayed the ultra-nationalistic wolf salute. The Great Wolves movement was founded as the youth wing of Turkey's far-right nationalist movement party, which is allied with Erdogan's Justice and Development Party. The gesture caused diplomatic tensions between Berlin and Ankara. Federal Interior Minister Nancy Pfizer condemned Demiral's actions, saying that the symbols of Turkish right-wing extremists have no place in our stadiums. The Labour Party in the UK is celebrating a landslide vote, seizing back the government from 15 years of Conservative rule. Post-Covid politics in the UK has been marked by austerity, privatisation of essential services, a steep rise in living costs, elite tax avoidance and increasing mistrust in mainstream politics. Celebrations for Labour on election night were tainted by wins gained in constituencies that had a swing from the formerly ruling Conservatives to Reform, a new right-wing protest party. Winning his seat, Reform leader Nigel Farage said, There's been an enormous gap in the centre-right of British politics. Westminster is completely out of touch with ordinary people. Farage's new manifesto pledges to leave the European Human Rights Convention and stop refugees from coming to the UK. We are coming for Labour, he said, be in no doubt about that. This is just the first step in something that will stun all of you. Jeremy Corbyn, former Labour Party leader, now running as an independent member of Parliament after being expelled from the party, won his constituency with 24,000 120 votes to 2,660 for the Green Party candidate. Iran today went to the polls in its second round of presidential elections amid unprecedented low turnout. Supreme Leader Ali Khamenei has attributed the low turnout in the first round of presidential elections to the people's preoccupations and troubles, failing to acknowledge reasons given by citizens and political groups for a widespread boycott. More than 60% of people failed to vote in the first round. Prior to the 2001 election, which had a 67% turnout, Khomeini had remarked that a participation rate of 35 or 40% would be shameful and said that low participation levels in Western countries reflects a lack of trust and disappointment in the political systems there. 
shortly before the second round of polls opened. Candidates made a last-minute attempt to garner support from Kurdish voters, appealing to their Kurdish heritage. Reformist Mazoud Pezeshkin delivered a speech in Kurdish. <laughs> 